Welcome back to another lens review. Today I'm looking at the Tamron 90mm f2.8 macro. This is a true one-to-one -one life size reproduction macro lens and it has been out for a while but it is still available new. I have all the technical details on the screen for you. You will find that there are two newer models in this particular version and there are also a couple of other versions which were released in the film era. Plastic body on the Tamron and you do have a limiter switch you can see here it's set to full and then just twist it to limit and that can significantly help with the focus distances and I will show you that a bit later on. Build quality on this would be better than a kit lens but obviously a high end premium lens it doesn't have the fit or finish for that but I don't see anything particularly wrong with the overall construction. Front element is recessed quite far into the end of the body and that means that I rarely if ever use the hood with this because there's virtually no chance of getting any stray flare. Close up shot now showing you the focus ring and you have a push pull mechanism. If you're using the Canon or Nikon version with a built in motor it's a single stage. If you're using the Pentax or A mount version then you'll have to flick manual focus on the body. Fully extended the lens just to show you the full length of this. The newer versions of this don't extend but um, they are quite a bit bigger and they're also heavier so it's a pro and a con with this it doesn't particularly bother me. Despite the plastic build you do have a metal mount and you'll see the aperture diagram. I'll open that up this is the Minolta version that I'm looking at and you'll see that you get a nice circular aperture at least at the maximum or close to that so that should help with the out of focus rendering. So it does take quite a bit of time to focus with this but I'll get on to the focus limiter a bit later on. This is the supplied hood and it's quite robust and um, snaps into place firmly perhaps slightly better than some of the other macro lenses I've looked at but I just don't use this very much purely because that front element is so far recessed it's very rare that you get an issue with flare on this particular lens. Showing you now the hood being reversed onto the body it does cover the uh, focus ring that's the only thing to say with that if you aren't ex putting it on normally. You also get a fairly decent padded case with this if you are buying it new that is. Give you an idea of the lens on a full frame body this is the A99 so relatively large body there are bigger ones out there because the lens is so small and it is quite light it doesn't add much to the overall bulk and weight even on a fairly big full frame body. On a more compact APS-C body you can still see it doesn't feel unbalanced and I've used this lens on both formats it works very well on APS-C and full frame. Showing you the focus action now this is in dim light so this would be considered a worst case scenario for the autofocus and it can take quite a while to focus. Macro lenses do have a long focal distance and they have to because they focus up close compared to most lenses which wouldn't focus anywhere near as close. So make sure you use that limiter switch. If you've got the limiter on and you're focused far away it will stop it focusing close. If the lens is focusing close and you put the limiter on it will stop it from focusing far away. If it misses focus you will feel quite slow and sluggish because it's going to cycle through the entire range. The limiter definitely helps significantly with this lens. This is not a lens that I would recommend for action photography. Although if you are outside in bright light the focus speed with the limiter and I'll point it at a bright light source now it are reasonably decent it's acceptable again it's the newer versions of this lens are going to perform better in that regard if you're looking for a general purpose lens. Plastic barrel on this again I don't have a problem with the build quality I think it's perfectly fine. This isn't a super expensive lens it doesn't feel fragile or weak. But it's true to say it doesn't have the build quality of some of the premium lenses. Starting off with the test shots outside at f2.8 in the middle, sharp, no complaints at all. And once we move to the edges and corners, they are also sharp. And this is on full frame, so that's a very good result. You will notice though there is some fall off, the vignetting and darkening of the corners. The fall off can be quite noticeable with subjects like this. I generally don't find it too much of a problem once you start to stop the lens down at f3.2 it improves greatly by f4 and pretty much a non-issue on full frame once you've stopped down to that aperture and again sharpness is excellent across the frame so you should have no complaints apart from that vignetting shooting wide open with the Tamron. Stopping further down to f5.6 again when the sharpness is good all over with this and the vignetting completely disappears 
and f8 this is going to be more for depth of field control there isn't much difference in sharpness once you get to that aperture difference here between the full frame and crop the vignetting is essentially a non-issue on APS-C because the majority of the frame on the outside is cropped out quick test shot showing you some flare it generally doesn't do too bad a job with flare this is the worst case scenario that I could find you do get a ring there and a bit of a highlight around it I don't find it much of a problem real world use as far as the quality of blur with this lens this has a good reputation and in most areas that is deserved very smooth transition from in to out of focus areas particularly if you're focusing at reasonably close distances if you're focusing further away I have found that sometimes it can be a little bit edgy that is potentially the only real weakness as far as the rendering and the quality of the blur which is subjective in 95% of cases I've always found that the blur is very smooth and a very good transition but bear that in mind if you're shooting at longer distances particularly with the lens wide open here's another shot showing you the vignetting with the sky it is quite noticeable here once you drop it down to about f4.5 or around about there it does decrease significantly chromatic aberration or purple fringing can be an issue with this lens you can see here the outlining effect that we've got it's not particularly bad compared to some of the other macro lenses that I've looked at and it is quite common but it can be an issue as far as the sharpness of the lens at longer focusing distances we're wide open at f2.8 and we have good details on the in focus area which in this case is the wall so the optical performance of the lens is very good I have very very few complaints about it apart from that chromatic aberration and the vignetting possibly could be an issue for you sometimes bit of chromatic aberration along the top of the wall again this can vary significantly real world shooting I haven't had too many problems with it I'm just trying to demonstrate areas where it can be a problem we move on to some test shots now this is the full frame at 35 millimeters the closest focus distance and I've stopped the lens down if you're using APS-C it works quite well for macro as well because you'll be able to have a narrower field of view because of the crop on the sensor but you can also move back further and get the same framing as full frame and it will give you a bit more depth of field which can be an issue with macro because you're so close to the subject so as well as macro shots and this is a hard disk drive that I took a picture of it also makes for a pretty good portrait lens here is a shot at f2.8 on APS-C you can get a decent amount of background blur uh, on full frame and on a crop sensor of course you're going to get more depth of field control with full frame on a crop sensor you're going to be getting an equivalent field of view of around about 135 millimeters so regardless of whether or not you are a full frame or a crop sensor user or both the lens works very well for these formats I like it as a portrait lens it doesn't quite replace an 85 millimeter if you're doing low light shooting or if you want to take full length shots with a lot of background blur but if you're looking for a macro lens which can double as a portrait lens the Tamron is a pretty good option the newer versions of this lens have a built-in image stabilization and weather sealing and a non-extending focus design whether or not those features are important to you will depend greatly on what you want to do with the lens but there are some advantages of this the cost is going to be significantly less those newer lenses are quite expensive brand new particularly if you buy this second hand and you may also find that the reduced size and weight could be an advantage it's certainly a decent affordable budget option for macro and portrait shooters